Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're heading out, way out, cosmically speaking. Yeah. We're exploring a discovery that's, um, well, it's giving us this amazing accidental look into the universe far beyond our own star. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about a celestial photobomb, basically. It's really got <laughs> people talking. We're digging into a recent report from Nature.com. It just came out September 16th, 2025, and it focuses on a comet that is uh, genuinely out of this world. So our mission today, unpack the story of Comet 3i Atlas, figure out why it's such a big deal, and you know what its surprise visit tells us about everything out there. Okay, let's unpack this, right? So the core of this is just... It's wild how it happened. We've got this exoplanet hunting satellite, TESS, right? So they're looking for other worlds. Mm -hmm. Scanning very specific stars. Exactly. Doing its job. And it accidentally snaps pictures of something totally different. Can you imagine? It's like you set up your camera for one thing, perfectly framed. Yeah. And later you look and there's this amazing, unexpected thing just sitting in the background. It really is a fantastic bit of luck. And TESS, uh, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, its main job is super focused. It's built to find exoplanets by looking for these tiny, tiny dips in starlight when a planet crosses in front of its star. So its focus is very much on, you know, our cosmic neighborhood. Nearby bright stars mainly, it's a very systematic search. Which is exactly why this is so cool. TESS wasn't looking for comets, not at all let alone stuff from, you know, outside the solar system. Yeah. This wasn't planned. It was just a pure cosmic, oops, a photobomb on a galactic scale. Ah, right. And what gets me is how the universe just kind of threw this thing at us and Tess just happened to catch it. Makes you wonder what else is hiding in plain sight in all that data. And that photobomber, that surprise guest, is Comet 3i Atlas. Now, the 3i part, that's really important. It means it's only the third interstellar object we've ever confirmed. The third one. Wow, only the... Only the third. Think about it, almost every comet we see comes from right here, our own solar system. Usually the Kuiper Belt, way out past Neptune, or the Oort Cloud, even further out. They're basically leftover bits from when our planets formed. But the Rhea Atlas, it's from somewhere else entirely, another star system. So it's incredibly rare, an alien visitor almost. Okay, so it's super rare. But the source also said something like, it might have been spewing gases for months before it was spotted. I found that bit really interesting. What does that actually mean, the skewing gases part? Does it tell us something about its trip here or how Tess even saw it? Ah, yeah, that's a key detail. Comets are essentially um, dirty snowballs, right? Ice, dust, rock, all mixed together. When they get close to a star like our sun, the heat makes the ices turn directly into gas. It's called sublimation. Right, not melting, just straight to gas. Exactly. And that process creates the fuzzy cloud around the, com the coma and sometimes those amazing tails. The fact that 3i Atis was doing this, spewing gas, for months before we really noticed it properly, well, it suggests it was really active for a long time. It must have been pretty bright, putting on quite a show, which is probably how even an instrument not looking for it, like Tess, could pick it up accidentally. Huh. So it was making itself known, in a way. Pretty much, and it raises questions, you know. What kind of ices did it have to keep that up for so long? Was it different from our comets? Fascinating. And it wasn't just Tess, right? Didn't the Hubble telescope also get a look? It did, yes. And the but Hubble image gave us a much clearer picture. What did it show? Did it confirm the gas stuff? Absolutely. Hubble showed, and I quote here, a haze of dust surrounds the bright nucleus of Comet 3 Alays. That haze. That is the coma. It's the visual proof of all that gas and dust spewing out that we were talking about. So it confirms it was active, but it also gives astronomers a chance to study that dust, that gas, figure out what it's made of, you know, get clues about its home star system. It's a fantastic image, by the way. Credit where it's due. NASA, ESA, David Jewett at UCLA, and Joystick de Pasquale at STSCI did the image processing. Incredible stuff. Okay, so we've got this amazing story. Accidental discovery, super rare interstellar comet caught by the wrong telescope. But let's zoom out a bit. Why is this such a big deal? What does this accidental picture of a faraway comet mean for, uh, you know, for you listening, for our understanding of the universe? Oh, this is where it gets really exciting because uh, three ILAs came from outside our solar system. It's makeup, it's chemistry, it gives us direct clues about how other star systems formed. Think about it like this. We can't easily send a probe light years away to another star to scoop up material. Right, that would take forever. Exactly. But this comet, it's like that other star system sent us a sample package delivered mm. right to our doorstep, cosmically speaking. It's a piece of another stellar neighborhood carrying information about the ingredients and conditions over there. It's an incredible shortcut. A cosmic delivery service. I like that. So, okay, we get the sample. What are scientists actually looking for? What can it tell us that, say, our own comets can't? 
Good question. They're looking at the chemical fingerprints, like what kinds of ices are in there? Water ice, sure, but also things like carbon dioxide, methane, carbon monoxide. How much of each? How do those ratios compare to comets born here? Are there unexpected elements, maybe complex organic molecules we haven't seen in our comets? Each little detail tells a story about the birthplace, the temperature, the chemistry of the gas cloud where its star and any planets formed. Studying three Iaculas lets us compare. Are the building blocks of planets basically the same everywhere, or are there weird variations across the galaxy? It lets us test our models of planet formation in a totally new way. That's Yeah, that's huge. It really puts things in perspective. And it makes me think, too, about these accidental discoveries. If TESS, which hunts for planets, found this, should we be, like, combing through all the data from all our telescopes, looking for surprises. That's a really interesting point. It kind of feels like sometimes the biggest finds happen when you're looking for something else entirely. Yeah. You know, like finding treasure while you're just digging in the garden. Absolutely. Serendipity is a huge part of science, always has been. We collect so much data now, vast amounts. Often it only gets analyzed for its main goal. But discoveries like Three Ailolos really hammer home the value of, well, digging through those digital archives, mm -hmm. applying new techniques to old data, or just looking with fresh eyes. Who knows what else is buried in there? Right. And the beautiful part here is the synergy. The telescope designed to find planets yeah. is now telling us about the raw stuff that could make planets, but from totally different star systems. It's yeah. just, it's a fantastic connection. Wow. What an incredible deep dive this has been. The story of Three I Atlas, found by accident, by Tess. It's just a perfect example of the universe throwing us these amazing curveballs, these unexpected gifts. A rare peek at the ingredients of other solar systems delivered right to us. Thanks so much for joining us on this cosmic journey today. And as we wrap up, here's something to chew on. If an exoplanet hunter like Tess just stumbled onto this interstellar visitor, what other incredible secrets might already be sitting in the data archives of our telescopes? What forgotten signals or unnoticed blips might be waiting for someone to look again? maybe holding the key to understanding how common planets are, or even where the building blocks of life come from. The universe seems full of hidden gems. Sometimes you just need to look sideways. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.